The history of the NFL, as well as its collegiate counterpart, is intimately entwined with the 150-year history of the football itself. Evolving from a melon-shaped rugby ball to the angular, tech-infused prolate spheroid found soaring in the skies of NFL fields and college stadiums today, the football is an indelible symbol of the sport. Since 1941, the sporting goods company Wilson has been the steward of the almighty pigskin, and this is what more than 80 years of football-making perfection looks like. From cutting tanned cow hides, yes, cow, not pig, to turning, lacing, and molding the final product, Wilson creates every game ball for the NFL and NCAA right here at its Ada, Ohio factory. But before Wilson perfected the recipe of aerodynamic performance, visibility, and durability of today's modern football, the flying wedge changed drastically as the game evolved through the decades. Although the NFL hosts the pinnacle of professional football talent today, the sport was born on college campuses throughout the U.S. In fact, the sport we know and love today wouldn't exist without its collegiate origin story. And that story begins on November 6, 1869, in New Brunswick, New Jersey, when the first American football game took place between Rutgers University and the College of New Jersey, known today as Princeton. With each team sporting 25 players, the game, to describe in modern football terminology, looked more like an extended fumble as players tried to kick a soccer ball across the opposing team's goal line. Rutgers won 6-4, and the student newspaper referred to this cacophony of flailing bodies being filled with wild shouting and frantic kicking. In the following years, the soccer ball was substituted with a melon-shaped rugby ball, but the game more or less resembled a mismatch of its two European predecessors. The fledgling American sport needed a guiding hand to form order from chaos, and they found it in the visionary leadership of Walter Camp, also known as the father of American football. Creating the game's system of downs, as well as its line of scrimmage, Camp fully evolved the game beyond its European origins, and modern American football began to take shape. Back then, football was a game of laterals, short flips, and running. But with the introduction of the forward pass in 1906, the football morphed to accommodate this powerhouse play, and over the years it became narrower and narrower. Although college athletics continued to innovate for decades, the sport officially entered a new era when the NFL formed in 1920. This new league officially adopted the Spalding J5V as its game ball, but it was still much larger than today's modern pigskin. Over time, footballs ditched pig bladders for rubber for inflating the ball. And legendary Notre Dame coach Newt Rockney even introduced the double-lined football in 1924. A decade later, in 1934, a rule change introduced the telltale taper ends and narrowed body of the American football. Passing exploded among offenses in the 30s and 40s, and Washington Redskins' slingin' Sammy Ba became one of the first great quarterbacks in NFL history. Known for his incredible accuracy, Ba was once asked to hit one of his receivers in the eye with a pass, and the quarterback famously replied, which eye? In 1941, Wilson purchased the rights to the Spalding J5V, nicknamed the Duke after New York Giants owner Wellington Mara, and its mostly modern dimensions cemented football as a passing game as well as a running game. Quarterbacks were soon putting up 1,000-yard seasons, and both Johnny Unitas and Jack Kemp threw more than 3,000 yards in 1960, thanks in part to the pass-friendly dimensions of the modern football. The same year, the rival AFL formed to challenge the NFL as the top American football league. Instead of using the Duke, the AFL used the Spalding J5V and J6V balls that were narrower and also one quarter inch longer, a perfect fit for a league that was trying to be higher scoring than its NFL competitor. Legendary Jets quarterback Joe Namath quickly became the AFL's biggest star. And during the 1966 season, the AFL began merging with the NFL culminating in the joint league's first Super Bowl between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Green Bay Packers. Unable to decide what ball to use during the game, they instead chose to use both. NFL's Green Bay quarterback Bart Starr lobbed the Duke at LA Memorial Coliseum, while Len Dawson stuck with the Spalding J5V. With the two leagues merging, as well as a variety of rule changes in the 70s to ensure the game remained high scoring, American football exploded in popularity but the football itself was still evolving. In 1981, Wilson introduced the Ultra Pebble design to enhance grip, and over the decades, the football became way more robust than its melon-shaped forebearers. Cotton laces were replaced with polyurethane, and internal rubber bladders were now three-ply polyurethane layers. 
While two of the layers are standard polyurethane, the third remains a Wilson secret to this day. And as American football has gone high-tech with ever-impressive jumbotrons and multi-billion dollar stadiums, so too has the football. In 2016, the NFL began testing sensors in footballs for collecting data on the fly, literally, during football games. Wilson sews one of those chips into the 24,960 footballs it makes for the NFL every year. Today, the NCAA GTS football, used in more than 180 NCAA programs, is a little smaller than the NFL's Duke, but its greatest distinguishing feature are the two white lines for extra visibility. When college wide receivers enter the pros, they often say that the NFL ball is harder to catch without the white stripes. Every year, Wilson makes 700,000 balls, whether for the NCAA or the NFL. So whether lacing up the NCAA GTS football or putting the finishing touches on the Duke, Wilson remains the stewards of a gridiron football icon, a prolate spheroid of creativity and ingenuity that's been the heart of American football for more than 150 years.